This is a ridiculous expectation, so ridiculous as to raise the suspicion that it's intended solely to render the bill unworkable and meaningless. This amendment would serve only to challenge law enforcement uh, who are properly doing their job to stop smugglers and illegal aliens from terrorizing their communities. If the gentleman has opposition and has an offer to define actively assisting, then that would be great. But the reality is that what's going to happen is what we've seen happen in the state of Texas, where we have a governor who has murders on his hand as far as I'm concerned, because we've had active deaths at the hands of mishandling this. If this is going to be a federal issue, then the federal government needs to be the ones that are absolutely going to be over federal law. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As legislators, it's our job to make sure we are not moving forward with drafting legislation that is on its face flawed. If we want to legislate and address immigration, let's mean what we say and do so in an effective manner. And this bill does not live up to that standard. The inclusion of the term actively assisting is ripe for judicial scrutiny and will undoubtedly result in court challenges, wasting taxpayer dollars and government resources. But fiscal issues caused by poor legislative drafting are the least of my concerns with this bill. This language is so deeply concerning because we already have been witnessing how aggressive policing tactics and unconstitutional racial profiling directed by rogue governors like Governor Greg Abbott have led to severe harm to and has undermined our legal system, all in the name of actively assisting the U.S. Border Patrol. Take, for instance, this past Christmas, where U.S. citizens, a husband, wife, their 13-year-old daughter, and their grandmother living in El Paso were wrongfully targeted by Texas officers in unmarked vehicles after they were coming back from visiting relatives just across the border in Mexico. The officers ran the family off the road, and at least four Texas Department of Public Safety officers wearing street clothes and tactical vests quickly surrounded their car and began pointing semi-automatic rifles at them. Because of the accident, the gr grandmother had to receive x-rays and still has lingering back pain. The daughter, likely traumatized from having weapons of war pointed at her and her family. No one, including me, doubts more must be done to address the problems we are seeing at the border. But this type of unlawful harassment of citizens is not it. And to be clear, my amendment in no way prevents federal, state, or local officers from working with Border Patrol agents, nor does it say that federal, state, and local officers do not have a role to play here. In fact, several border counties, including counties in Texas, already have U.S. Customs and Border Protection memoranda of understanding with state and local officials to work with immigration enforcement. Nothing in my amendment would prevent these written agreements that lay out their clear chains of command and clear codes of conduct. But what my amendment does is to prevent state and local law enforcement from acting lawlessly at the misguided direction of a governor who refuses to work with men and women of the United States Border Patrol because he thinks he is above the law. If my Republican colleagues reject this amendment and keep the current language, they are supporting actions that have historically lacked due diligence to prevent harm and encourage lawlessness that leads to more dangerous instances like the one that occurred at Christmas. If the House rejects this amendment, it will give Governor Abbott a tool to carry in his to carry on in his unconstitutional border policies without federal oversight and coordination. I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this amendment. Thank you, and I reserve. Gentlelady from Texas reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? I'll declare time in opposition to the amendment. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this uh, amendment requires a new fact to be proven at trial, that the pursuing law enforcement officer was, quote, under the command of the U.S. Border Patrol in each and every case. Well, I can imagine many circumstances where local law enforcement's alerted to a border patrol chase that's going through their jurisdiction and then act immediately to assist them without necessarily being directly under their command. The issue is not who is pursuing smugglers, but rather the circumstances of the pursuit. Namely, this person is evading the border patrol. It's unlikely that during each and every pursuit in progress, 
The Border Patrol is going to have time to deputize local law enforcement, place them under their command. This is a ridiculous expectation, so ridiculous as to raise the suspicion that it's intended solely to render the bill unworkable and meaningless. These high-speed chases occur far too often in our border communities, and state and local law enforcement are often first responders in, in protecting these communities along with the Border Patrol. If this is going to be a federal issue, then the federal government needs to be the ones that are absolutely going to be over federal law. So. They can have memorandums of understanding if that means that every single county at the border needs to go ahead and enter into a memorandum of understanding, then they need to. But this is a federal issue. It is not a state issue. And this protects federalism and makes sure that it will be under the hands of the federal government with this federal law instead of state government. And I reserve. Reserves. Gentleman from California is recognized. I'm prepared to close when the gentlelady's finished. Gentleman's reserves. Gentlelady from Texas. I'll yield back. Gentlelady from Texas yields. Gentleman from California is recognized. I was just shocked to hear the gentlelady accuse the governor of Texas of murder. This is an example of the kind of extremism that we see on the left in this house today. Now, the fact is the Border Patrol agents are strained to the breaking point by, by this administration's open border policies, and they often rely on local law enforcement having their backs. You want to know what active assistance is? It's a uh, high-speed chase is, is going through your community, and you're there in a position to back up the Border Patrol. You can't negotiate that. You cannot be you know, deputized. Uh, that is part and parcel of law enforcement. You have to spring into action. Whenever local police are providing this assistance, they should have the protection that this bill provides. And it also puts every smuggler on notice that if you're truck, uh, trafficking human beings or drugs uh, across the border and you're pursued, well, you darn well better pull over. Uh, apparently, this is just too much for the Democrats to bear. I'm not sure whether we should laugh this amendment off the floor or merely defeat it, but in either event, it's a foolish idea. It deserves a no vote. Uh, and I uh, yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from California yields. The question on the amendment is offered by the gentlelady from Texas. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those in favor say no. no. The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Speaker. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Texas rise? I request a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6, Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from Texas will be postponed.